Welcome to the session regarding water management and agricultural plans. This is one of four topic related engagement sessions that were undertaken for the Comox Valley Agricultural Plan update during the month of May 2023. The other three topics were land use planning and agricultural plans, emergency planning and agricultural plans, and business viability and agricultural plans. The presentations for the other three um, sessions are also available through the website and we recommend that you view all four in addition to the introductory presentation which provides uh, the overall context for the agricultural plan itself. In this presentation, we'll be providing some examples of water management actions that are found uh, in other communities for inspiration for the Comox Valley Agricultural Plan, as well as reviewing current initiatives that are underway with regards to watershed planning uh, within the regional district itself, followed by a series of questions that can be filled out uh, and completed through the online survey link, which is also available on the website. So to start, here are some examples of water management actions that we find often in agricultural plans in other communities. One is to establish a regional water board. This is often the case in areas of water scarcity, such as the Okanagan, where the Okanagan Basin Water Board has been in existence for many years. A water board can provide decision making and governance across a region or even more than one regional district in order to provide uh, watershed based decision making for allocation, pricing and stewardship. Another action that we see sometimes is to mandate comprehensive drainage plans for new developments. This is important because oftentimes new developments outside of the agricultural land reserve occur on hill slopes and so uh, water flow from these developments can impact the farmland which is uh, often downstream or below the new developments. So drainage can be extremely important. There's also, it's also important to manage growth containment boundaries for urban sprawl to ensure that less land is paved over, which also has implications for drainage. But more than that, there's a need to ensure that extremely uh, efficient water conservation uh, devices are included in any new urban developments. As we've discussed in other pro uh, pr presentations, there's a need to connect some of these issues, such as climate change, the environment and emergency planning policies directly to agriculture across the planning uh, framework, such as the regional growth strategy, official community plan and zoning bylaws. It can be important also to identify ways to balance urban and rural water needs in times of drought and to encourage the implementation of water storage infrastructure at a farm community and regional level. And we know that there have been initiatives uh, to that effect recently in the Comox Valley. Another key tool that's used at the regional district and local and other local government level is to develop watershed management plans. And we'd like to talk a little bit about that within the context of some of the work um, that the Comox Valley Regional District has been undertaking. Watershed plans can help guide decisions that impact watersheds across communities. And they are often built on data. So they're scientifically based so that the decisions that are being made can be uh, verified and uh, justified. So the critical data included in watershed plans typically include water quantity and quality, climate and biophysical realities, threats to water sources, and water demand models. There are two watershed plans that were created in the last few years within the Comox Valley Regional District. The first is the Comox Lake Watershed Protection Plan, and then the second, which has particular relevance to the agricultural community, is the Solom River Agricultural Watershed Plan. With regards to the Comox Lake Watershed Protection Plan, the objective was to identify risks to the watershed and make recommendations on long-term protection. There were six key recommendations that arose from this protection plan. To initiate education and outreach programs for the local community and visitors relating to watershed health and protection. To procure land bordering the lake to improve control over water supply. To implement a comprehensive water monitoring program. To develop and enforce trail management plans in the area and to restrict new development in the watershed. Also mandate annual updates from forestry companies on activities in the watershed. We know that the forestry uh, use of many of watersheds within the region are of concern to the agricultural community. And therefore it's heartening to see this uh, recommendation in the Comox Lake Watershed Protection Plan. As mentioned, the Solom River Agricultural Watershed Plan is particularly relevant to the agricultural community in the region because so many farms um, have their water supply directly from this watershed. The watershed plan was completed in May of 2021 and it included comprehensive analysis and engagement process. 
The plan considered several ways of improving access to water. One, through on-farm storage, such as cisterns, dugouts, shared storage, and well widening. Secondly, large-scale storage, such as Wolf Lake. Third, alternative sources, such as reclaimed water. And four, through demand-side management, such as improved irrigation management and efficiency and irrigation system upgrades. The plan itself includes seven recommendations with 32 specific actions within, nested within the seven recommendations. The seven recommendations are as follows. To pursue collaborative watershed management. To enhance land use planning to protect watershed health and agricultural water supplies. To advocate for use of provincial water management tools to protect watershed health and agricultural water supplies to support producers and, com and the community in water management and watershed stewardship, to improve understanding of the watershed, to improve understanding of impacts of climate change on the watershed, and to take a con conservative approach with future water use. Here's some examples of the specific actions that were embedded within those key areas. For example, 1B is to take a roundtable approach to collaborative management, including Comox First Nations, agriculture community, the agricultural community, forestry, stewardship organizations, and the regional district. Action 4B is to support producers in developing on-farm on water storage options. Example 4D is to assist existing users in licensing their wells. Example 4F is to support beneficial management practices on farms that will improve watershed health, such as drainage management, irrigation upgrades, or soil amendments. Action 4G is to restore hydrological function through riparian areas and wetlands. Actions 5A, B, and E relate to monitoring surface and groundwater quality and quantity. And Action 6A is to assess the impact of climate change, both now and in the future. So with that in mind, we have the following discussion questions that we are interested in receiving your feedback on. The first question is, where do you go to access your water data or your conservation information for your farm operations? Secondly, do you support the concept of a regional watershed stewardship service, which was one of the key recommendations from the plan? And what actions would this service or should this service prioritize for agriculture? Third, what is currently working well in regards to agricultural watershed initiatives in the Comox Valley? And what could be improved? And lastly, what actions from the Solom River Agricultural Watershed Management Plan do you think that the regional district should prioritize within this agricultural plan update? We hope that you take the time to consider these important questions and provide your input and feedback through the online link to the survey within which these questions can be answered. There are also questions related to the other four areas of engagement that took place during May 2023 around land use, emergency planning, and business viability. If you would like to discuss this topic more with me directly, my name is Ioni Smith and I can be reached at ioni at uplandconsulting.ca or through the phone at 778-999-2149 and we will be accepting all input and feedback until the end of June 2023. Thank you so much for your interest in the Comox Valley Agricultural Plan update.